Well, I never really thought about it as a kid. I mean, I was raised by a single-parent mom along with my sister in Ferndale, Michigan. All my relatives are college graduates. My grandparents were college graduates. They were social activists, community activists. My grandmother was the first female president of a Grange in Ohio. So I grew up with a mother who was active in the American Association of University of Women, active in our church. One of the things our church did at Christmas time was to have you fill out a form where you pledge a gift of service, not a present for your family, a gift of service. It could be you promise to mow the lawn all summer, or it could be you're gonna go help at the YMCA or some community organization. So I, I'm from a family of activists uh, who believe in service, believe in public service, but also private service. It's interesting, my mother and all of her friends, you know, again, we, we had a lot of friends and neighbors that were very helpful to me, teachers, others, counselors, all were very interested in politics. Uh, not, not, none of them had ever run for office, but they were very interested in public service. My mother was a great admirer of Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, and so she was always uh, thinking about the poor, about people who were less fortunate. Um, we never thought of ourselves as <laughs> less fortunate, even though I'm thinking now growing up without a father, it was different, and especially in the 50s where that, you didn't hear much about that. But it was just, uh, they valued public service, but also community service, both. Uh, so I was raised in a household, though, where, you know, going into public service would be something that was very much admired and respected. You don't hear that much today, unfortunately. It's interesting, though, the millennials, the, the young generation, the kids born between 1982, 2002, they are very much into community service and community action, even if they're turned off by politics. So in one sense, that's a very good development. In another, it isn't. But it's still, you get something positive out of this new generation, this young generation. What concerned me when I became governor, uh, which was January 1st, 1983, was we had 17% unemployment in Michigan. We had the lowest credit rating in the nation. We were tied with Puerto Rico for the lowest credit rating. And youth unemployment was, you know, 25 or 30% in the cities, probably 50%. So one of the things I thought of doing, and I modeled it after Franklin Roosevelt's Civilian Conservation Corps, was we created the Michigan Youth Corps. And we put to work that summer 25,000 young people in basically community service. They picked up litter along the roadsides, they worked in state parks, they worked in county fairs, they worked in, in um, uh, uh, retirement homes, different places, nursing homes. So it was all really service, and they were paid minimum wage, although we had supervisors that were paid a little bit more than that. Um, and part of the program also was, because for a lot of them it was their first job, was teaching them how to do a resume. We had counseling, so they could use this as a springboard to another job the following summer or a real world job if they were not in school. Of course, we encouraged them to finish school as well or go on to higher education. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a proud Spartan. I uh, have two degrees from Michigan State. Uh, was active in student government there. Uh, you know, and so I feel like I got my political start there running as class president. Uh, I'm a big, of course, Spartan booster of football and basketball, and, and actually we had endowed scholarships in football and basketball. And I started thinking, gee, before I leave the scene, I ought to do something on the academic side and, and, and do something to encourage young people to go into public service. So it was more than just a major gift, which it is. It is also, it allows me to be involved. So I put my time in it, too, in terms of working with the Department of Social Science and the Political Science Department and the Economics Department, History Department, uh, and working with students and with their professors and teachers. So it's, it's the money, yes, that brings in well-known speakers to, to try to inspire people into service, public service, but it can also be private service. Our very first speaker was President Bill Clinton, and he talked as much about private sector community service as he did running for office. I thought that was interesting. And that was his idea, it really wasn't mine. Um, but yeah, we want to inspire young people to go into service however they, however they do it so they can build a better world, and we want them to know they're needed. They're needed. 
Um, and so it's, it's, it's yes, the major investment I'm making, but it's also my time and Janet's time.